What's going on guys? This is your girl Shy Gem and I coming to you with another recap for Queen Sugar. This is season three, episode 11. I cannot believe we're in the 11th episode. It doesn't seem like it's been on that long, but it has. And I'm guessing it's almost coming to a close because as we know, Greenleaf is coming back. That's another one of my favorite shows. So I'm like, go from one good show to another good show. So you guys know how I like to do it. I go character by character, but actually I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit tonight. So we start with Darla. <sighs> Darla's laying in the bed basically, and you can tell that she's feeling conflicted about what's going on. Um, and having to go through this whole court process. She's crying. She probably misses Ralph Angel and the family dynamics, but can't turn back now. So when she gets up, her meddling mother is in the kitchen. She's telling her to basically run through her checklist of what she needs. And number one, she needs her letter from her sponsor. And that's going to help during this mediation. You're going to meet with the lawyer to prep. Then mediation will take place. So once Darla meets with the mediator, they're going over, I mean, not the mediator, the sponsor. They're talking about the letter. Darla thanks her for all the wonderful kind things she said. And Darla is expressing to the sponsor that she doesn't want Ralph to hate her and that she doesn't want Blue to resent her. I think that ship has already sailed on the Ralph Angel part. I'm not really sure about Blue, but the lady was like, you know, you got this, you're a good mother. And she even told her that her sister went through a custody battle. But whenever you're feeling any type of way about the situation, please give me a call. That was basically code for don't go and relapse. Call me, talk to me. They get to the mediation. Ralph Angel's attorney is going over her little spiel about him being a model citizen. He's been working. People have had nothing but great things to say about him. Um, the findings that DCFS were looking into, they came out to be non-credible. So the complaints were dismissed and he's been so good they're going to even get him off probation earlier. He's, he's eligible for it. So what more can they say? Darla's attorney's like, well, we offered Mr. Borderline 70, 30, but he declined. And Ralph's attorneys was like, well, we declined because we're actually going for full custody. Of course, Darla and Darlene's mother did not want to hear that. I'm sorry, Darla and her mother did not want to hear that. And Darlene, again, meddling, is doing all of the talking for Darla. Darla. Darla is just sitting there looking stupid. What makes you think you can go for full custody and you don't even know if that's your son? We don't even know if he's yours. And I was like, you're using that against him like he slept with several different people and lied and deceived your daughter. Like, again... Your daughter is the reason why we're in this situation. And I find it so strange that now that they're not together, he's all of this, he's this, he's that. But before you were willing to let your daughter marry Ralph Angel. So I'm just like, I'm speechless at how she's treating him. Like he's a piece of gum on the bottom of her, of her shoe. He's like, that may be the case or whatever, but that's my son. I signed his birth certificate and I know my rights, so we can go for this. I'm not just going to let you come and try to take him. No, that's not happening. So we're going to go full force with this full custody. So the attorney for Darla is saying, you know, Darla has provide, is providing everything she can for him. She has a job. She has a home. Blue has his own room. And Blue has even stated he wanted to stay there. And Ralph said, of course he does, because you're getting him with material things. You're buying him all this stuff. You're buying his love. 
And again, Darlene running her mouth. Well, you don't have the finances to take care of him. He's had strangers, men and women outside in his in his home. He's on probation. I'm like, again, all these things. Well, not the stranger thing, because that wasn't happening when they were together. But he was on probation when he was engaged to your daughter. So what's the issue now? Like, and again, we're in this because of your daughter. So <laughs> I have to keep reiterating this. So she said, when can we take the test? Take the test. Take the test. <laughs> and he was like, I already took the test. And he's not my son. But again, I signed that birth certificate. He's my son. He's my son, even though he's not biologically my son. So I know my rights. I want full custody still. So Darla's sitting there again looking stupid while her mother is pulling the strings. She's just pulling the strings. So when they get done... You know, Darla is back at home with her mother and they're going over what happened, you know, the events and whatever. And Darla is telling her, you know, I want to try to work this this out and it not be any type of animosity between Ralph and I. Like, I still love him. Like, I just don't want it to be like this. This isn't the way. And she said, even after all the things that he's done and put you through, I, I, how can I just sit back and just let this happen i'm trying to fix it and i'm like what did ralph angel do to her besides forgive her for everything that she's done the several times that she has left the boy okay left and came back took him took her back after he's been she's been with several men because i know he knows she was probably tricking off tricking her body for drugs like he took her in he still wanted to wife her so what did ralph angel do to your daughter I, nothing. She didn't. He didn't do nothing. But Ralph, I'm gonna need you to again control your anger because during the mediation he was getting mad. He was talking about how she was in and out, which is true. I know it's true. Keep your cool. Remember what Anton said. Keep your cool. But Darla basically told her mother, "I'm gonna need you to have to. You're gonna have to step out. You're gonna have to step away. Let me handle it." So we saw Darla actually walking her mother out. And basically telling her to get the hell on. So I'm like, that's the best thing you could have did, Darla. Maybe you can actually clear your head without her pulling your strings. Because she is definitely pulling them. So, Charlie and Micah. The PI friend came to her job. And you know when somebody running, coming to your job, looking for you, some shit is about to go down. And that's exactly what happened. The girl got through the grapevine that Micah is a person of interest for the fire. I don't know how they got that quickly like that. Like, that was fast. So he's implicated in the fire. And it won't be long before they probably try to question him. She said he's not charged yet, but it could happen. Charlie was like, oh, no, that couldn't have been. She was like, did you even know where he was that night? So she was like, oh, wait, I didn't. She went to the school. Well, she's before she gets there, though, Micah's talking to his friends and they're talking about possibly if Anthony's in there talking. Um, the detective came by another one of the, the kids' house, but he said, I can't talk to you when my parents are not here. I know my rights. And I'm like, that's good he knew that, not to talk to them when his parents are not there. So Charlie gets him, take him outside. She's like, are you involved in this fire? And then he was like, I'm sorry. I, it was a mistake. And she was like, Micah. You can go down for arson. That that's a big deal. That's you can get some serious time for that. Arson, trespassing, vandalism, like possibly a hate crime. Like, what were you thinking? So he's actually trying to justify it and he's getting mad at her for telling him the consequences of his actions. Like he was really upset with her and he was getting smart with her. And she was like, you're acting stupid. He said, so I'm stupid now. She was like, no, your way, your, your behavior is stupid. Like, I'm not saying you're stupid, stupid. Your behavior is. <laughs> so she told him, I don't want you hanging with them friends no more. You don't know them. And he said, they are my friends. Like, that's bullshit. He actually said that to his mother. That's bullshit. And I'm like, Charlie, you didn't let him grow up in that privileged life. He don't know what an ass whooping is. You need to whoop his ass real quick <laughs> so he can know what it's like 
you know, you want to be a part of the woke society and all that stuff from around the real black brothers and sisters. Well, let me show you this real black ass whooping that you about to get real quick. So she's like, when you get out, you take your ass home. He said, her, I ain't going home. I'm going to Nova's house. So he goes to Nova's house and he's basically admitting to her that he knows about the fire. And he's again saying it was an accident. And Nova said, look, being a Negro and being conscious in this country can cause you to be enraged. And I said, ain't that the truth? Because when you do start to pay attention and actually not not woke, but you know, pay attention to everything that's going on and the cricket, crooked, cricket, crooked practices that take place with your local aldermen, your government, the police, everything that feels like it's strategically set up to for you to fail, it does make you angry. But Nova told him, you got to be smart about the anger. You have to channel it in a positive way that will get your message across and will actually make change. You can't just be doing stuff just to be doing it. And she actually used a saying that said anger is wasted if not followed by action. That is absolutely true. Okay, so you burned the place down and I know it was by accident. Now what? Like y'all did that. Y'all did the little spray paint and all that stuff. Now what? And he was like, you know, I'm, he wants to be a part of the change. I get it. But... You guys are immature. You acted immature in that situation, and now you're in a whole heap of trouble. You admire Nova so much, and you try to model yourself after her. Why didn't you even tell Nova about the situation and ask her for advice on how you could make people aware and stop the money like she said I know you want to stop their money from tourism because they're mocking your people but you actually burned down history that was needed because that, those cabins being there actually represents your people that live there and when you go visit those places you can actually have a sense of like if you were there, like it can actually become a moment where you, you know, it makes you proud to stand on the same grounds that your people stood on. But you burned it up. It's nothing there anymore. So basically, Nova told him, you need to be more strategic, channel that anger to a more positive thing and kind of take the emotion out of it. Basically, that's what I got from it. That's not exactly what she said, but I got exactly what she was saying. So he said, I just want to be more like you. You know, you inspire people. People look up to you. And that's when she admitted that, you know, I'm not perfect. And he said, but, you know, you've done so much and you do a lot. And she said, I sold weed and I got too sweet arrested. So she admitted that to him. Of course, he, you know. I'm sure he wasn't expecting to hear that, but she basically let him know that she's not perfect. After he leaves, and I, it seemed like it might have been the next day because Nova goes to see Too Sweet, and she actually, you know, is checking on him. He's doing really good. He has a 3.5 GPA, um, and he thanks her for everything that she's done and standing by him during his darkest hour. And she says, well, I'm the one that got you arrested. I sold the drugs, the weed to the guy, and he sold it to you, so I apologize. And he said, you know, I'm not mad at you. Um, you still, even through that, you stood by me. So I can't be mad at you. I thank you for everything you've done for me. So it worked out. He's not mad. And in the end, he's still, he's winning. He's doing really well. He said he'll never go down that road again, so... So Charlie calls Davis because she's at her wit's end with Micah. He's not listening to her. Maybe he'll listen to him. And I'm like, Charlie, he's not going to listen to Davis either because he hates Davis right now. Davis goes up to his room and he's like, what's going on with you? And he said, you know, 
if you're hurting your mother or you're 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 causing something to your mother, he said, I'm not causing no more harm to her than you have. Like you're worse. What you did was worse, basically. And so he was like, I don't want you to make mistakes like me and going down the wrong path like me. You know, some things you just can't come back from. And he said, I'm trying to make a change for people so I won't be like you. And he said, you know, he doesn't want to be victim anymore after that situation that happened with that cop. He wants to make a difference. He doesn't want to be a victim. And um, he feels like this is what he needs to do. Well, Davis basically explained to him, you don't want to go to jail trying to stand for a cause. Like, you got to be smart, basically. Don't ruin your life. Micah and the friends met with Anthony's mother. And she is telling them, you know, she can't sleep. She has now a second son that's behind bars. And she just doesn't know what to do. They found his fingerprints on the lighter. And the reason they already had his fingerprints is because he's already in the system for something petty that he did before. Something with cigarellos. They said it was a joke. Whatever. He did it. She asks, were you guys also involved? And of course, the guy with the bad skin, he says no. And she said, I find it very strange that you all hang together as much as you do, practically attached to each other. And you all weren't with him when this happened. And you could see the guilt on Micah's face. And it felt like he wanted to say something. But the other guy with the bumpy face stopped him. And they said, sorry. And they'll try to get money raised and people together organized to, I guess... I don't know, protest. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to do whatever they can to help. And Micah even offers his Aunt Nova to get some local community lawyers or something to help. So I'm like, she knows that them kids is probably with him because like she said, they're always together. So, but that guilt, you can see in that moment, like that guilt is really bothering Micah. So... Charlie, <laughs> Charlie goes to meet with Sam's sister and they're just kicking and talking about how they're going to just go in this meeting and they're talking about how they're going to pull the rug from under Sam. Well, they get to the meeting and they're talking about the plans and the layout and Sam's like, when can we start this? They're all excited and happy to build this prison to lock our black asses up. When are we going to start the groundbreaking, y'all? They said, "Ah, uh, uh we got to vote, right? Remember? Remember we got to vote? And Sam was like, Puh, we voted three days ago. It's already done. And Charlie was looking like if, if she could shoot an egg out her ass, I think that would have been the moment because she was looking like, no, this was not supposed to go down like this. But <laughs> Sam paid her dust. And he told her, it is what it is. We voted. You don't have a vote. It's done. So all that she went through to get Colton to give up his shares, his seat, and she still didn't get it. So now she got to go back to tell the farmers that the meeting was a no-go and that the jail is definitely happen happening. Because before that, she met with the other two farmers and they know about the jail. And they said, we're going to try to do everything we can to stop this jail and she said it's already being done so the next step would be for the parish council so the parish council has to vote um and then after they do their vote it'll be done the farmers seem to think that they can appeal to the parish council but she's saying you don't know who they have in their back pocket there so i don't know but she got a lot of work to do. I told you Sam Landry is conniving and sneaky as he is. He knows to be two steps ahead. He probably had people watching you. So I don't see you winning. Only thing I only time I see you winning is, is if he dies, like honestly. Or somebody <laughs> but as long as he on this earth, I think he's gonna always be two steps ahead. I just see it that way. Nova got a text from her, I believe editor. 
and the text read that they had a few thoughts on her edits. Well, it appeared to be more than a few thoughts, thoughts because I said thoughts, <laughs> thoughts because it basically, it seemed like it was a lot of things that the editor didn't like and wanted to change. Well, when Nova's friend came over, she was like, basically, you're talking about other people more than you're talking about yourself. You're talking about everybody else's struggles and plights, but not yours. Like, we want to know your story. What's going on with you? But Nova was like, I can't really tell my story because I got a lot of skeletons in my closet. So I don't know about all that. But I mean, that's the truth, Nova. It's your book, but you have nothing about you. You're telling everybody else's business, but you won't tell your own. Of course, again, Nova has to go back into the drawing board again and tweak some things on her book. This is probably like, what, the third or fourth time she was done, had to tweak her book and change some things. But Vi, actually, they didn't show her that much this episode. Somebody, they actually did like an expose on her and her pies. Um, a young lady came in, the camera crew, they filmed her baking her pies and they're having a good time and they're talking about the recipes and then the girl tries the pie and she's telling her how good it was and then they interviewed her and asked her if there's basically any situation where she had to show like perseverance and you know Val wasn't going to tell what's really going on as far as her lupus so she just said oh girl you know when you got to try to have five ovens and all that stuff you know she went finna say oh yeah I got lupus so because that ain't none of their business according to that but yeah um she was very limited in this episode but the way the episode ended it was like Micah he's really everything is starting to I see crash and come down on him and I feel like now he's really starting to think about the repercussions of the actions that he took. And he's laying in his bed crying and Charlie comes in and she lays with her baby boy. Even through all the crap he had put her through the last couple of days and his attitude and being mean and just being a nasty teenager like some of them are. (laughs) I know because I deal with one firsthand. (laughs) You know. She saw her baby boy and she went in there and held him and he was like, you know, I messed up. I messed up. So Charlie will find a way to help him. I'm sure he'll probably have to go through some scrutiny for a little bit, but I think Micah will be fine. It's just this is one of those lessons you got to learn. So he really want to know what it's like to be a black man. He's about to get it, honey. (laughs) So... (laughs) That was it, guys. Another great episode of Queen Sugar. I'm going to get off of here. I have my Beyonce here because I'm going to see Beyonce Saturday. We like the party. (laughs) Also, I want to say happy birthday to the late, great Whitney Houston, who you could say I'm paying homage to her, too. You know, I want to dance with somebody. But that's it, guys. Like this video. Thumbs up. Share. Please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I hope you all have a great weekend. I will definitely be talking about my experience at the On The Run tour. Why not? For those that don't get a chance to go, I can tell you about it. (laughs) All right, guys. I shall talk to you later. Bye.